Hey everybody, this is Adam at David French Music for Talking Shop. And I'm going to be walking you through today how to diagnose when it's time to bring your alto saxophone or equivalent saxophone in for repair. This is a really good measurement to figure out its time. And all you're going to need is a 1 16th screwdriver. It doesn't have to be as long as this. This is just mine on the bench. A uh, Phillips head, just a common one will do. And a hazmat suit, which isn't included. Um, you need an iron stomach to actually look into this one. Luckily, my Shokinin Yamaha apron keeps me impervious to low E-flat pad syndrome. So what we're going to do is if your saxophone's kind of playing, but you're thinking it's time for service, the first pad I like to look at to determine what's going on is your low E-flat pad. So if you get right in there, pads start out like an orangey, reddish color. That's not that color. And unfortunately, the E-flat pad is the runt of the litter. It gets the short stick every time because how we hold and play the saxophone has at an angle. So everything that runs down the saxophone, which I know none of you out there are eating any food or drinking soda or any adult beverages before you're playing the instrument, but if you do, that's going to go down to the low E-flat. So that's the first point I like to look at. So you can just do a visual inspection, take a look at it, if that looks like it's not the right color, it is time. Pads look like this when they're brand new. And we're gonna just take that off to show you um, what's going on. So I'm gonna use my Phillips head screwdriver. The E-flat guard comes off really easily. It's just on there with three screws. Just make sure you're on a level table to take it off. The screws do have a mind of their own and they like to run away. So I'm just gonna take this off. And before I even go to take the pad off, once I take the guard off of the actual instrument, I can raise that E-flat pad up higher, which is just going to really tell me, again, out with the old, in with the new. You can make the decision yourself. So we take it apart, and I just want to really show you what's going on in there, and I can show you a way to clean it if you've got a really, really sticky E-flat pad and you don't have time to get to the shop before your next show. So this is the 1 16th screwdriver. I'm turning counterclockwise, and I'm going to then just pull that rod out. I'm going to leave it with the guard screws. Leave the C. The C on most saxophones is attached to the E-flat. Don't worry about that. You just leave it off to the side. So there you have it. There's the suspect of, you know, a myriad of problems, but this is a great way to diagnose that it's time to bring your sax in for service. So what I like to do to clean it is I use what we call pad juice. It's not readily available for just the average person. You can also use um, a very light alcohol or you could use actually pledge. It's a secret weapon in the repair shop. And what you're going to do is you're just going to lightly go around what we call the seat of the pad, or the part of the pad that creates the ring and is the immediate contact point with the tone hole, which is this thing right here. So I'm going through, and I'm just going to do the first half, and I'm going to leave the other half totally unclean so you can see what it's doing. So I just did the first half. Here's your before, there's your after. You see how much of a difference that makes? And your Q-tip. That's just half of the battle. So we're gonna go, we're gonna do the same thing. Get the other side of the pad. If you're cleaning these pads, this is also common with your palm F, your palm E flat, and your palm D. If you're cleaning them and the seat returns to the same color um, as when the pad is brand new, you're safe. If the pad still looks really black and looks kind of dry, you're, it's, you're out of luck at that point. You're gonna wanna get a new pad. So I finished cleaning it up, and if I've got a little bit of extra time, I'll go over to the tone hole itself, and I'll do a little bit of cleaning on that as well. Because the corrosion and the buildup and all of those sodas and lunches and breakfasts and all the things you're not putting down your instrument, they build up down here on the tone hole and the pad. So really give it a good clean, give that chemical enough time to work and to start taking off the corrosion on the tone hole. And don't be afraid to use an extra Q-tip. You want to make sure everything's dry again. Um, if you leave moisture on the pads or on the tone holes, it's just going to encourage the same problem to happen again and again. So 
it's all clean. You can touch it. You can take off your hazmat suit. And what we're going to do, is so the E flat goes back on first. It sits on the edge of each of the posts. The C goes on next. It sits in between. If these don't fit together, you've got bigger problems and you're going to want to call us here at French Music. But if they do fit together, you're good to go. The rod in one part at a time, and if it's kind of resisting you, just start moving the keys and the hinge tubing as a whole to try and get it to go. And then once you hear it kind of click, it's ready to be screwed back in clockwise into the rest of the post assembly. In here, these ones are actually easy enough. The springs, you see how the pads aren't really opening or closing the way they should anymore, or if I turn it this way, it just hangs open. I have to make sure I put the springs back on. So the E flat, you can use your finger, that's easy enough. Um, you can use a screwdriver if you don't own a spring hook. And that'll work to get the C around there. I kind of just manipulated it down and back. But say I didn't have that. Or I'm doing some nighttime shopping on Amazon with my wine. Or some soda, whatever you want. I believe my colleague Rich mentioned this in a previous video, but you can get a spring hook. They're really, really cheap. They look almost like a, a crochet needle. Um, these actually have ends on them that are able to push and grab springs. There's a bigger side and a smaller side. This is just the most effective way to do it. If you've got one or if you want to buy it, they're really inexpensive. And then you're back in. Everything is working as it should. The pad looks a lot different of a color than how we started. And then the last thing you're going to do is put the guard back on and screw those back in and you're ready to rock. And I'm going to leave that part up to you. That's easy enough. Catch you next time. This is Adam with Talking Shop at David French Music.